It's a windy day. We're back at Duxford and I'm trying to get booked in for my skills test. But before we do that, let's pop into this lovely hangar here, this World War One vintage hangar. Let me just talk you through the last few lessons that I've had preparing for this milestone in my life. So, I am now at a stage where well, I was at about a month or two ago, but things just didn't sort of work out quite right. Uh, I probably cocked up a little bit. I didn't get my takeoff distances correct, and I wasn't happy with how I came to the answers that I'd come to when it came to that sort of thing. And obviously, takeoff and landing distances are more important than the flight itself, uh, and they, they have to happen. Therefore, I might have my skills test tomorrow. So, what you're about to watch, I'm going to do a voiceover of and edit and watch with you as revision. That's if it's tomorrow, it might get called off. You almost need the stars to align. I'm, I'm struggling to get the plane available, the weather's okay, and also an examiner. If I can do this tomorrow, it'll be one of the proudest moments. You know, it would be a proud thing. It's taken me nearly two years to do this, of real hard work, sleepless nights, and I really want to do it now. Without further ado, what we're going to watch in this video is firstly we're going to do a navigation exercise. So we're going to start our nav off. Now I'm not going to get to where we actually want to go because my instructor is going to put in a diversion. And then after that I think we tracked a VOR radial which is a way we can navigate using radio frequencies from beacons and I completely cocked it up and I'm going to look at it again. Then we're going to go and do a few circuits and then we'll go to the next day which will be my general handling revision. I hope you enjoy it and uh, I'm I'm going to be learning again with you while we do this so i'm actually putting this out not for you it's for me so let's get on with it swing c0 holding alpha ready for departure so we're flying a route from Duxford all the way to Old Buckingham and then down to a old abandoned aerodrome called Birch over to Ratting Common and then back down to Duxford again. But you never ever get to go that far. Also I'll explain where we actually start our nav because it's actually on this little wind farm here. So we've done all our takeoff calculations and we've done all that up in the in the tower so I don't really want to take you through all that. Um, we've just got clearance to take off and taxi over to the end of runway 24 hard at Duxford and as you can see we're just making our way over to the end of the runway now. Windsock is nicely positioned for you guys to see that we've got a lovely wind going straight down the runway just what you want. Probably should angle my aileron slightly into that wind a little bit so little things like this I'm noticing whilst watching this video with you. At this point, if we take notice of the instrument camera, I'll be looking at the cluster just to my left, which is going to be our airspeed. You can see that pin rising now, which is when I say airspeed live. Once we hit about 55 to 60 knots airspeed, that's when we can rotate, which is when we pull back on the stick, uh, create lift over the wing and get the airplane up into the sky. All along at this particular point as well, you can see a rectangular cluster of instruments in front of Jeremy. They are our engine T's and P's, so temperatures and pressures. Keep an eye on them, especially during takeoff, but all the way through the flight. Okay, we're going to the engine November Sierra Dutch information. Follow the Spitfire. Okay, I'm just going to do a remembered kind of memnomic checklist that we do just after we've taken off. And also, if you listen carefully, you'll hear that we get a new QNH altimeter setting, which I don't tend to write down anymore. I just pop it straight into the altimeter and read back the setting to whichever air traffic controller has given it to us. Hello, I'm going to do lift now, so lights off. This was all good. Yeah, these instruments, the other ones, definitely. So I'm just having a look under my wing now to turn on my crosswind leg. Um, usually if we were standing in the circuit we'd keep our altitude at about a thousand feet but because we're actually going out on a nav we're going to constantly keep climbing. As you can see now on the altimeter we are about 1,300 feet coming through that now and we're just on the crosswind leg and then we'll turn on our downwind leg 
and we'll keep on climbing all the way up. Jeremy's going to ask me where I'm going to be climbing up to and the idea is to get up to altitude as soon as you can then get the plane trimmed out and just make sure that everything is okay. Make sure that your engine's fine, make sure TMPs are okay, make sure everything's normal, make sure the radio's set up and get ready basically for the first turning point on your nav. Alright, going to climb up to 2500. Uh, clouds are permitting. Every 500 feet throughout our ascent up to our planned altitude, which is 2,500 feet, but might turn out to be less when we find out what the exact cloud base is, I'll dip the nose down just to have a look in front of us and make sure there's nothing in our way. Once we get to the end of our ascent or where we think we're happy with our altitude, we should be able to put the nose down and see on the nose our wind farm up ahead. So you might wonder why do we choose the wind farm that's a long way away from where we started our journey to actually begin our navigation. The reason is, is it gives you time to get up to your altitude, it gives you time to figure out if there's anything wrong, it makes the whole workload within the cockpit a lot easier, you already know roughly where you're going, you're within the vicinity of your aerodrome and it's just a better way of doing things, it, may, it means you're right, right, I've got the plane trimmed, I'm ready to go, as soon as you get to that particular point you'll know exactly where you're going to be heading, you'll have your radio frequency that you're going to be changing over to already popped in and you're going to know exactly the DI and everything, it's just all going to be there. And that's why I do it. Just for information, request frequency change to Lake and Heath on 128.90. That's wings 20. That's wings 20. Roger, call and rejoin. Roger, that's wings 20. So now because we're moving outside of Duxford's airspace, we've now requested to change our radio frequency over to RAF Lake and Heath, which is a United States Air Force base. And I've got to say guys, when it comes to being a general aviation pilot, these guys are a godsend. They have a radar service, everything's absolutely class. They're really polite, really clear. They speak fantastic American English and all they're doing is looking out for your safety. Yeah, when you're flying in their airspace and you're on their squawk code and on their radio frequency, Frequency, you know that you're in safe hands. For now, we're just going to listen in to what's going on on their frequency, but now we're getting ready to do our turn. So I'm going to do what's called a gross error check, meaning why is that city there when it shouldn't be there? What's the heading going to be? Heading is going to be 051. Uh, roughly what we're on now, actually. <laughs> and also make sure of my heading and then get ready to do the turn, time when we do the turn, and then we know how long the leg is going to be. Navigation is about getting all these little things right, in order, and just making sure you're happy with where you are and where you're going. So now that I'm over the top of my wind farm, I can then turn onto my heading, which is roughly the heading we're on already, do our gross error check. So if you look at the map, you can see that just to our north, we're gonna have a railway. We're also gonna have the A11 just there. Uh, and we're just looking out for those things there. I've obviously made my turn now and I'm on to my heading. We're now ready to do the next part of the navigation, which is now that we've been listening to Lake and Heath, we actually need to say to them that here we are, we want to get what's called a MATS penetration, which is a military, which is a military air traffic zone penetration and hopefully they're gonna say yeah that's fine guys here's a squawk code so we can see you on a transponder on our screens in our tower and also here's the pressure setting to put into your altimeter Lake Need approach class of wings 20 request max penetration last call Lake Need approach big and cost Lake Need approach class of wings 20 request max penetration I always find this bit a little bit difficult. You have to turn your transponder to standby, put in the value squawk code that they've asked you to put in, and then pop it back onto out again, and then just wait for them to come back to you. Rate of contact, one eight miles southwest of Lake and Heat, QNH one zero zero zero, and basic mass penetration approved. Stage 1000, mass penetration approved, 2BOB, Duxford to Duxford, 
for navigation out to the east near Honington, Press Wings 2-0. Press Wings 2-0, roger. Be advised there are several KC-135s in the visual and radar pattern at Milton Hall. Roger, we'll keep an eye out, Press Wings 2-0. So now the guys at Lake and Heath can see where we are because of our squawk code transponder setting. They're looking out and telling us about traffic that might conflict with us. Stop it, Metro, stop it. Traffic wing 20, traffic 10 o'clock, 6 miles southbound is uh, Lake Wing 2100. Roger, we don't have visual, Classic Wings 20. Please. Alright, so that's a uh, Red Lodge down there. Just on the right-hand side of the... Yeah, sorry, we'd like to... Uh, Lavin. Lavin, the X-ray, we're going to squat 7,000, take a change of booze, good day. 7,000, good day, thank you. So you might have heard the air traffic controller over at Lake and Heath or, or Mildenhall say to the other pilot, Squawk 7000, that means that that pilot is now leaving their area, their radar area, and Squawking 7000 is what we put into our transponder when we're traveling VFR, so visual flight rules, and we are just a plane telling everyone that we are traveling VFR, we're not under any control. Uh, free to check. Classic wings 20 traffic, 11 o'clock, 7 miles south eastbound. There's a uh, KC 135 in the visual pattern, Milton Hall. Roger, we have visual with traffic, Classic wings 20. Anyway, I'm probably going to do my Frida checks a few times now. Everything seems to be going okay. We're well on track for our nav now. So a Frida check, how that works, it's a memnomic here again, so we can remember things. And before I actually enter going through my Frida check, I always just pop the carb heat on. So fuel, have we got enough fuel? Are we using the right tanks, which isn't actually what we'd have to worry about in this 172, because it's always set to both tanks. Radio frequency, let's have a quick look at that. Then we'll have a look at the engine T's and P's yet again, make sure they're okay and then make sure that our direction indicator which is the small aeroplane thing you can see on the cockpit there is aligned with our compass and it's only a really good time to do that when you're in level flight. A stands for altitude just making sure that our altitude is okay. I tend to make sure that I do a free to check every five minutes along the flight depending on anything it doesn't really matter and also after major stages of flight so a turning point or a gross error check or when we've just taken off or when we're just about to enter the circuit but in general you should be doing a free to check every five Five minutes minimum. Anyway, I'm going to give you a diversion here. I haven't been here before, so it'll be interesting. There, yeah, Wheats Farm. Hey, okay, Wheats Farm, do you want to go there now? Yeah, anytime. Okay, Wheats Farm. So Jeremy has just increased the workload for me in the cockpit by about a thousand percent. He said we've got a diversion, he's just made a mark on the map and he says I want you to take me to Waits Farm. This is how they train you for diversions. So the first thing I do is actually find out where Waits Farm is on the map and as I can see it's near a place called Sudbury. Then I think right I'm not going to start my diversion from here, that'd be stupid, I don't have enough time. We use the same method that we used when we were flying and starting our nav at the wind farm. And I looked over and I could see a place called Bury St Edmunds that's very well known for its huge chimney stacks and said, right, we're going to start our diversion from there. Right, I'm going to start my route for Bury St Edmunds, OK? Yep. Now we have time to plan the diversion. So when planning a diversion, I use a set amount of rules. And before I go up to fly as well, I'll always fill out a wind card that looks like this. And this is what I'm gonna to use to plan my diversion with. So before we took off that day, while I was doing my pilot log and getting all my planning ready, we obviously need to know what the winds aloft are gonna be because that will push our plane about and we need to fly in slightly different directions to account for that to get to our destination. Therefore, I can use a tool called a whiz wheel to input the wind at north, northeast, east, southeast, etc., etc., all the way round, and also get my airspeed as well. This is much easier to do on the ground now rather than when we're up in the plane and will pay off when we're told where to divert. So, the first thing I'll do is get my knee board out and draw the new route. So, I can draw a line from Bury St. Edmunds down to Waits Farm. Then, what I'll do, I'll use my plotter to get the distance and also the heading. And then I'll use my wind card to get the wind variation because you never know, we might have a 20 knot crosswind up there and we'll need to point the plane in a different direction to account for that. And that will also affect our airspeed. But once I've got those, I'll know exactly how much to plus or minus to our heading. And I'll also know what our airspeed is. I'll use the simple table at the bottom. Then I can say to Jeremy, right, we're gonna be flying on this heading and it's gonna take us about 
11 minutes to fly down to Waits Farm. Then it's a matter of flying over to your start position, also telling Lake and Heath quickly that you're leaving the area now, and then it's overhead Bury St Edmunds, turn onto our heading, note the time and fly the route. As soon as we start the route as well, we'll do a gross error check to make sure there's no towns or villages that shouldn't be either left or right or in front of us to make sure that we are exactly in the place we should be. Take it the bridge, Cousin Weeks 2-0, just a part of the to the south fire, Berry St. Edmunds. Cousin Weeks 2-0, Roger, radar service terminated, squawk 7,000, frequency change, quickly, day, sir. Squawk 7,000, Cousin Weeks 2-0. Gorgeous, isn't it? That's a nice town, have you been there? Berry St. Edmunds, yeah. Oh, it's lovely. I'm just going to straighten up in a sec to the heading. All right, gross error check. Opera should be somewhere down there. So now I'm looking for the old aerodrome of Chedborough and uh, just keeping an eye out for that, making sure that it's there, doing my gross error check. Anyway guys, this flight pretty much went as planned. We gunned it down to Waits Farm and found Waits Farm in the end. We had sight of Haverhill and therefore Ratting Common, so flew back over there and got a rejoin to Duxford. Duxford information, Classic Wings 2-0, request rejoin the information, currently over Wadlow Wind Farm. Okay, 2 uh, runway 24 left hand, the QFE is 9 at 8 hectopascals. QFE 9 at 8 hectopascals, runway 24 left hand, uh, just coming in for some circuits, passing mix 2-0. 2-0, roger, report downwind, 24 left hand, um, circuit is active with the company 152. Uh, request a straight in joint please for runway 24, passing mix 2-0. Roger, roger, report, joining the circuit then, uh, and uh, the company circuit is just on a touch and go, climbing out now. Roger, Classic Wings 2-0. I'll take it upon myself to call 4 mile final, okay? Yeah. Right then, we might as well get our landing checks in now, make things a bit easier for ourselves. So, brakes all good, undercarriage in, mixture. I'm just going to get some heat in there, all set to both. So although they haven't asked me to, it's probably a good idea I tell them when we're at four mile final. Four mile final, Classic Wings 2-0. Yeah, 2-0, uh, touch and go, your discretion, runway 2-4, surface wind, 260 degrees, 8 knots. Roger, Classic Wings 2-0. 12 kilo, Papa, downwind for 2 Okay, Papa, Roger, report final, company 172, within four miles for a touch and go to stay in the circuit. Hey firm, go kill it, Papa. So I've now slowed the plane down so our airspeed is within what we call the white arc. The white arc means that we can now safely start to deploy flaps. I'm putting our first stage of flap in, then we just let the plane settle a little bit. We'll put another stage of flap in and then we'll set the plane up at about 1700 RPM or 1500 RPM to maintain our altitude up towards our final. Then I'll be putting in our last stage of flap trimming the plane for 70 knots and descending down to the runway, flaring and hopefully making a nice touchdown. Now it's just a matter of trundling in our lovely speed, ready for our final. Battle wings 2-0, final. Battle wings 2-0, runway 2 4 touch and go, your discretion, the surface wind 2 degrees at 7 knots. Roger, battle wings 2-0. Training the engine to keep us yeah, coming in at the moment. I'm just going to put an extra bit of flap in now, I think. So now that I've got full flap deployed, it's basically a matter of now 
of using the nose down or nose up attitude to keep a 70 knot airspeed. Also remember that the airspeed indicator is the inner small gauge that you can see. It looks like at the moment it's pointed at 80 but that's actually 80 miles an hour. If you have a look on the inside you'll see it's sitting right on 70. Once we're stabilized at a 70 knot speed approach we can then use the revs of the engine to arrest our descent or increase our descent and effectively aim the plane either nearer or further down the runway. Yeah, approach is clear, a stable, stable approach, we're, we're, we're a good, we're good approach, LMP, yeah. we have permission, yeah, that's it. So as you heard Jeremy say there, not enough back pressure and also I made a little bit of a mistake. I probably left about 200 revs still on. Once you're over the threshold of the runway, I've been taught that you can just cut the revs pretty much, uh, cut the engine, flare the aircraft, wait for the sink which is when the aircraft starts to descend and just keep pulling back, keep it flying for as long as possible, slow the plane down as much as you possibly can and then let it settle down onto the runway. Here I didn't really do that on that landing, probably the first landing I'd done in about a month actually so I've got an excuse guys but anyway we're going up now for a circuit and i don't know what jeremy's going to give us here we'll probably have something like a glide approach or maybe even a flapless approach we're now ascending up to circuit height of hopefully about a thousand feet whilst doing that we're going to turn our base leg and then also turn onto our downwind leg which is effectively us flying backwards parallel about a kilometer away from the runway once i'm established on the downwind i've then got a little bit of time to do all my landing checks brakes and the carriage Make sure, heartbeat out for a moment, do on both, engine, he's okay, direction needs a bit of fixing, uh, okay, altitude 1000 feet, passing wings 20 downwind, train 20, report final, runway 24, roger, passing wings 20. What is that factory that means any? What's up? The factory down there that needs to be no tabbed, isn't it? Not a factory, I think down there. Yeah. That's a, that's a gas venting station. It fires up, it's basically methane gas, you know, letting off methane every so often. It's quite alive. <laughs> I've only, I think I've only twice actually been activated. You have, to, you have to avoid it anyway. I do love a little chit chat with Jeremy about bits and pieces and all that sort of stuff. And it's nice now to be at a point where I quite happily fly a circuit and have a little chat and all that. Anyway, what we're doing now is effectively what we did when we were coming in from 4 mile final. We're slowing the plane down. We're getting that airspeed pin into the white arc. So you'll see it's now in the white arc. So now we can pop up the first stage of flapping. We're going to let the plane settle a little bit after we've done that. Then we're going to pop our second stage in and then we're going to reconfigure our engine revs to make sure that we don't lose too much height. We're at about 900 feet now but we're nicely descending and you will descend more when you enter into a turn. So we're now turning on to final uh, and always a good little tip for me that Jeremy's always said is get your third stage of flapping as soon as you can and also call final as soon as you can because sometimes the radio can get really really cluttered and you can't get your call in. Hi, this is a bit touch and go. Flat wings 20, final for touch and go, runway 24. Flat wings 20, runway 24, touch and go, your discretion, surface wind 252 degrees, 9 and off. Roger, flat wings 20. Yeah, more back pressure at the end. Yeah. As you, after you've flared, wait a wee, wait a couple of seconds, if you feel a sink, then apply back pressure. They need a little pop up window that comes up, up under 300 feet, crap. Yeah. crap. So crap, my car peak's all good, runway's clear, the no, car peak should be cold. Up below uh, 300 feet. Okay, runway clear. Runway clear, 
Um, approach is stable, and we have permission. Yep. I'll just get the airspeed up a bit. Just Best approach ever. Right, fly level, pull up, pull up, and right now, wait for the sink. Off to the papa, one on, on the touch and go, and a bit far to, to part ahead of you. That's correct. That's correct is Jeremy language for, well done, you've done really well. <laughs> So now we take off yet again, we retract all our flap when we take off from the hard at Duxford because you've got such a long runway, it's lovely. And then we're going to go back up into the circuit and go round and Jeremy this time wants me to do a grass landing. What you're about to see is not the best grass landing I'm afraid, but it's something for me to learn from while I'm watching it with you. Also landing on the grass is a bit of a trick on the eye because you haven't got as much on the ground when you're coming into land to show you how far off the ground you are. So you'll see us flare quite nicely here, but then we'll also come in for a slightly hard touchdown. And then afterwards as well, when we were on, I guess what you'd call our go around roll, I forgot to retract the flaps to 10 degrees, which is what we do when we're doing a short field grass takeoff. It means we get off the ground quicker and at a lower speed. That's wings two zero, final for touch and go on the grass. Wings 20, runway 24 grass, touch and go, your discretion. Service in 270 degrees, 9 o'clock. Roger, that's wings 20. Alright, below 300, can't be cold. Runway clear, approach stable, emission granted. Keep, keep, you have to keep, keep the back pressure on until it's landed. Harder to see the runway as well, isn't it? Because you, you sort of don't have the... Oh, 10 degrees, neither. 10 degrees. Okay. There you go, 10 degrees. Yeah, weight off the front wheel. Now you're going to get an idea as to why I think Jeremy's a really, really good instructor. Just watch all the little things he does here. I mean, I think all three of the approaches have been a little bit low. Yeah. So uh, just been a little bit too eager to get down, handle the throttle. Yeah. And um, and also, I just remember watching back some of my landings where my approaches were too steep, and they always seemed to be a little bit more heavy on the touchdown as well. So I thought oh, I'll come in a bit shallower and sort of like have a nicer sort of approach. But anyway, uh, lights are off. Uh, instruments all good up there. Oh, track right, quite right there. Alright, flaps up now. Yeah, pull up as you do, keep flaps yeah. up. That's very steep. Ah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, I should always, I always keep it between these two usually, sorry about that. There was a time you said to me, I don't want to see aerobatics when we were in the circuit. All these little things that Jeremy says when you watch it back, like I am with you guys right now, really, really sink in and you do remember them for next time round. Anyway, we're on the downwind now, guys, so let's do our landing checks again. Pass, brakes on the carriage, fuel on both, in. Tell me you're doing a right approach. Tessa wings 2-0, downwind for a glide approach, runway 24 to land. Tessa wings 2 zero, roger, report final, runway 24. Roger, Tessa wings 2 zero. Right, so I'm going to leave car heat out anyway. Right, got the power. 
Right, so on this glide approach, I've already made my first and what could possibly be in a real situation, fatal mistake. As soon as I cut the engine power and simulated a failure, I should have pulled up the nose and tried to get whatever altitude I could whilst trying to maintain a speed of 70 knots. That meant when I moved into this first turn, I was already down to about six or 700 feet when usually I'd be up about 900 feet. Anyway, a few seconds before that, you'd have seen me trim the aircraft for 70 knots, which is quite easy to do in this plane because that's full nose up trim. We currently have no flaps deployed, but every time I get more and more sure that I'm going to make the runway, I should add a stage of flap. That's wing 20, final runway 24. Runway 20, land or touch and go, runway 24, at your discretion, surface in 270 degrees, 10 knots. Uh, landing, class of wings 20. I'm sure you know where our altimeter is, and currently it's reading 250 feet, very, very low. Are you sure you want to? <laughs> Go around if you want to as well. Yeah. I think I'd have got that actually. Yeah. A little bit tight though. That's the wings 2-0 going round. 2-0, roger, report downwind, left hand. Roger, that's wings 2 zero. So you heard me say to Jeremy there, I thought I'd have got that and really I did think I'd get that. You might have also heard Jeremy say we've got a land now because I've got another student waiting, but he wasn't happy with the approach there and he doesn't mind us going round. A circuit takes about five to 10 minutes. So he thought let's go round again and do it all again. This next glide approach is much better. And also I think from memory, I think it might have been one of the better landings on this particular flight. Flatter wings 2 zero, downwind for touch uh, for a glide approach on 24 hard. Flatter wings 2 zero, report final for 24 hard. Roger, flatter wings 2 zero. I just want Charlie Alpha to visual disturb and I'll just hold you on for a moment. Do that, Charlie Alpha, Roger. Temple turn as well. So you might have noticed there that I pulled up a little bit, straight away whacked the trim back as well, and we've already entered our turn. And look at that, we're about eight to 900 feet this time. This is a much better position to be in. Runway 24, QNH 1002. QNH 1002, stop please there, for Where is he? So my airspeed's a bit high here, but I'm happy for that. And I'm quite pleased that I'm gonna make the runway now. So I'm just putting my first stage of flap in, flying on a bit. And I'm, I'm obviously now even more sure we're gonna make the runway because I've put a second stage of flap in. I'm just gonna quickly call final. That's wing two zero, final for two four hard. And we're just turning our final now. And I'm just putting that last stage of flap in just in this turn. And this is when glide approach is a really good fun. You're over the top of the runway. And you're swooping down almost like it's a, a little mini roller coaster. But we've got full flap. Our airspeed is just about 70 knots. So it's just a matter of lining up on the runway a little bit and flaring the aircraft and landing it. That's more like it, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't get the middle of the runway, but I sort of had him in my mind. Permission to vacate back to the hut across the grass, class of wings 2-0. Okay, 2-0, vacate right, um, give way to the steerman back to the uh, apron. Roger, class of wings 2-0. So you think about how long we've been up in the air there. We've probably done about, I don't know, hour and 20 minutes worth of flying, something like that. Um, and it does take its toll. Often the seat is ringing wet with sweat at the end. After we've shut down the aircraft, we'll often pop back up into the old historical World War II control tower of Duxford for a cup of tea and a bit of a debrief. Right, so I hope you enjoyed that first part of the uh, lesson. That was probably an hour and a half lesson there. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump forward to the next day. I am going to go up and do general handling and a couple of different landings. It did get very late and we did have a fair, fairly stiff crosswind on these, but I'm pretty happy with these now. Um, so yeah, watch that and enjoy. So this is the last lesson I have with Jeremy before my skills test the next day. Two, 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 maybe two, 200, 10 knots. So if you think this is all right, then you might decide it's okay tomorrow. Okay. I took up one for that uh, copied uh, mission uh, and then I'll uh, redirect uh, to the southwest of your ATZ remaining uh, 
clear of the club that later. Hopefully you notice here as well that I'm angling my ailerons into that crosswind that's coming over while we're doing our takeoff roll. Once we get to the point where we can rotate, we'll just nudge back on the control column a little bit, make the aircraft rotate and get up into the sky and then we can straighten our ailerons out into the climb. I can't figure out why but the microphone for the in engine I can't figure out why, but the microphone for the in-cockpit noises doesn't seem to be as loud. Anyway, Jeremy asked me to fly over towards Royston, which is a straight-out climb into this lovely, lovely sun, to do, firstly, a VX speed test. Right, um, could you set um, VX plus, plus uh, five knots and basically maintain level flight? So VX is best angle, and what we do is we slowly bring back the throttle and trim the aircraft with the nose up, so we get what Jeremy asks for, which was a VX plus five. So our VX angle speed is 62 knots, plus five, 67. So I'm slowing the aircraft down, pulling back, pulling the nose up, and then adding trim to stop me having to pull back on the yoke. And that's where Jeremy's great teaching style comes in. Yeah, one thing is missing, something isn't happening that should happen. RP. Well, should it be or shouldn't be? RP should be on. Yeah, it should be. Right, is that 67? Hey, 67 there. Right. Is it trimmed? Let go. Oh, All right, trimmed out. Probably just about 68 there. All right. And you seem to be descending though. Yeah. Oh, well, that's all the trim I can give it. Right. And um, that stopped it up. That's it. So 1800 RPM. 1800 RPM, full is trim is the right. We then tracked a VOR radial, which I've covered in other videos. So we're just going to skip that and move on to where we are now. Right, let's not get too far away, so if you do a, do a, you do a 180, okay? And uh, if you climb up to 3000 as well, we do some stall recovery, okay? I'm happy you're not going to mess it up, so um, let's do it in here. You could uh, show me a uh, stall recovery with a clean wing, level, level wing, uh, power back to idle. Okay, I'm just going to get it trimmed out. For it. Practicing stalls is seen as kind of an aerobatic move, so we've got a memnomic to make sure that the area is safe, called a hazel check. Right there, I'm just going to do a hazel check. Oh, very good. That's a typical gotcha. And Jeremy said that's a typical gotcha because a lot of students forget to do it, and I think that might be like a minor or maybe a major in your skills test. So, height is almost sufficient to recover. Yep. Airplane is clean at the moment. The setup for clean. Security, hatches and everything okay. Can't cage anything on here. Engine is good. Might just give that a blast of RP quickly. Yep, mixture rich. Fuel on both. Right. Location ABC. So airfields. We are actually near one. It's just over there but it's not away from us now. Yeah, uh, that mast down there as well. Built up areas, we're not near any built up areas at the moment. Controlled airspace, all just over there, isn't it? We're not near any of that. And cloud, no cloud below us. Right. And uh, D, uh, the only danger area is the, the balloons a long way away. Yep. Okay, I'll do my lookout again now. Might just do a 180 this time. Right. So we do a clearing turn. You can either do what I'm doing now, which is a 180, just making sure there's no aircraft near us, or you can do a 90 degree to the left and then 90 degrees to the right, and then you should be fairly sure that everything's clear. Uh, I try to look behind me as well. I don't seem to be doing that too much in this turn. Oh, there we go, a little bit behind. Just try and get your eyes outside of the cockpit as much as you can before you actually enter into the manoeuvre. Okay. Yeah, don't head towards that airfield, though. Oh yeah, we should go over this way. Stay near over wind pole and stay near home. That altitude back. Right then, three wings to all. I recover when I give the uh, the command, yeah. There's some aileron in here just to keep us level. 
Some people don't like doing stalls, but I think pulling the power back and lifting the nose up, waiting for our stall warner to go off, is kind of exhilarating and it's fun and it's just really good to do. And the more you do it, the more prepared you'll be if you're ever in that situation. Right, recover. Jeremy was also testing my ability to counteract a wing drop, which could also enter a spin, and I was hovering over the rudders ready for that as well. You've got to be ready for the wing drop. So next up is stalls with two stages of flap. Well, we're going to do uh, uh, the one with the uh, two stages of flap. Okay, in a turn. Right. So we do this particular manoeuvre to simulate uh, a stall at low level in the circuit. Because sometimes we're going to have two stages of flap and uh, we don't want to do too much of a turn and, and go into a stall. So what we usually do is reduce power of the engine, get within the white arc, and as you can see here, I'm putting our first stage of flap in, let the plane settle a little bit, then our second stage of flap, and then we'll drop the power to idle, and then we'll start to enter into a turn as if we're turning onto our base leg or onto our final, and then we're going to do something really silly and drop the throttle and pull up too far, and then the stall warner should come on, and then we should recover. And recover when you hear the stall warner. I don't know why, but the stall warner's not coming through the microphone, but hey-ho, believe me, it went. Speed of up 70. So as you can see, as soon as the stall warner went, you drop the nose, stay within the turn, go full throttle, carb heat cold and right rudder, get the plane going round, get it up to about 70 knots, level out the wings, and then go into the climb. Once you've got a positive rate, start retracting your flaps. Okay, that's pretty smooth, level off. Okay, yeah, it could be just a little bit more brisk pulling up as you take the flaps up. Don't, okay. let, don't let the nose come down. Let's uh, turn 90 degrees to the right. Have a look out. So our next stall is going to be full flaps and level wing as if we're coming into land and we've stalled over the runway. There's the airfield, that's good. So this is going to be full flap and level wing. Okay, putting it down to idle. This time I won't narrate how I put my flaps in. I've done it enough in this video so you guys can just watch. And you, uh, you got to recover on the first side of the stall, which is the stall owner. Right, that's a full flap. Well, that was a wee bit untidy. Yeah, a bit bouncy just there, so you could hear it on the stall water, couldn't you? Yeah, so sort of flopped a bit. So push it forward so you can look level and hold it there, and then apply full power and, and get rid of that there. flap. And then get rid of the flap 20 degrees. Just no, just look down, see where it is. Okay. Then get get to speed, pull up. Okay. All right. Well, another one here. Let's do a 180 to turn south, and we can have a look out. Well, after that incredible harsh reprimand there from Jeremy, that's about as harsh as he gets, guys. Uh, let's have another go at it.
Oh, I just want to say, don't bring that flap up. Don't bring that flap up too quick. Don't bring that flap up too quick. Oh, no, what have I just done? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see a positive rate before you take the flap up. There's no more flap left. Yeah. All right, we better too, do that again. Too much on the first set as well. All right, we'll climb up. on Jim wait for a positive rate wait for a positive rate and if you look guys the VSI is that indicator that we're just pointing now VSI stands for vertical speed indicator and tells us whether we're climbing or descending or flying level right that was much smoother yeah Ferry trip, just want to go right. this way now. Okay, so could you do a steep descending turn um, to the, the left? To the left? Okay. Guys, these are so much fun. Cut the power, 45 degree angle of bank, keeping 90 knots on the airspeed indicator. Down to 2,400. We practice this manoeuvre just in case we ever have maybe an engine fire or something like that and we need to get down to an area where we can plan a landing as soon as possible. Air level off here. Okay, uh, can we do a steep turn now? Just a, a medium sort of, a, no, a level turn, steep turn to the right. Hey, a 45 degree angle of bank. So hopefully you're doing what I'm doing here and you're making sure that our VSI stays in the middle where it is now, pointing at zero. We've added another 100 RPM to our engine speed to keep us level as we go through this steep banking turn. Remember to put that extra 100 RPM in, that's right. And if you roll out on the east. Yeah, it should be 2,400, so just climb up again. He just lost about 50 feet. Bring it up. Uh, where do you want to go up to? Yeah, 2,400. Okay. He just wanted to get up back to where he should have been. Yeah. That's your target. So you didn't, you didn't go outside the um, the limits, but uh, it's try and stick it on and keep it on the uh, altitude. Right, let's do a left-hand turn. Okay. When you're ready. And roll on the south. Just about inside the limit again. Turned a bit up that time, didn't I? <laughs> Overcorrected it a bit. Right, uh, at some point, um, he's going to um, pull the power. And you've got an engine failure. So, remember what the wind was? Uh, 180. All right. So now we're doing a practice force landing. First thing we do as soon as he pulls the power is trim for 70 knots. That's full back trim on here. And then we are actually going to turn so we're downwind. It's almost like we're on a circuit back at our home aerodrome. And we're going to start looking out the window. Once we've established our downwind, we're going to look out of the window for nice sort of fields that are pointing into the wind that are green and not ploughed up. I lose too much height getting onto the downwind. Uh, would well you can't over bank either. And that we can try and get into. Once we've done that and planned our descent, we can try and restart the engine. You'd obviously use grands, and if you were in a real situation, <laughs> but we're not. <laughs> Where's it going to be? Alright, I'm going to go for that field there, diagonally across it, okay? So we're, right. quite, we're quite near it. Yep. Okay, okay with the trees at the end. Yep. Alright, okay, so, 
fixture. Fuel. That fuel's on there. Carpet cold. Hot. Berlin. Hot, sorry. Too far away from that. Magnetos, electrics, primers in. Hey. Nothing. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Sucks for information. Cluster wings 2 0. Have an engine failure to the west near Gransden. Uh, 1,500 feet descending, 2 POB, doing a forced landing uh, near Abbotsley Golf Course by the looks of it. That brings 2 0. Give it a bit of a yeah. heat. Right, that's enough. Uh, there is a pylon in there, but I think we'll miss that. So we just tried to restart the engine there. That's what I was doing. I was doing mixture and carb heat and fuel, magnetos, all that sort of thing. Is the primer in and locked? We couldn't get it started, so I radioed a fake mayday to Duxford to tell them what was going on. Uh, and now I would squawk 7700 on the transponder and also get Jeremy to pull out a special beacon that we have. Then I'm going to tell him what to do in the event of emergency. Right, squawk 7700. Pull the tag on that and press the button. Right, Jeremy, um, when I say brace, you're going to put your hands on the combing here, put your head forward, and the cock your door open, and then we're going to leave away from the aircraft, OK? Yeah. So now that we've effectively turned final, we would have shut down the aircraft when we realised that we couldn't restart it. And now all we've got to do is get the aircraft down. We use the same method of adding flap and slowing the plane down at every point at which we're even more sure that we can make the field. Now, as you can see here, I've got a little bit too much height to get into this field, so you can turn away from it a little bit, zigzag your way in and crab your way into it. At a point at which Jeremy says, yeah, you'll definitely have made that, he'll ask us to recover and climb out. Feet. Let's go around. That's right. looking good. A few minutes later, we were back at altitude and ready to do some IMC training. Oh, you're going to pretend you've uh, rendered everything out, and you've only got um, you can only see the instruments. To pop them on. I've got a control at the moment. Yeah, control. Nice. So you're going to transfer your instruments now. You're in. Uh, you're in cloud. Okay. And I want you to take appropriate action. Okay. I'll do a lookout. What Jeremy means by appropriate action is entering a rate one turn. And if you look at our turn coordinator, you'll see that our left wing tip is touching that little dash in the instrument. A rate one turn should mean that we turn 180 degrees in one minute. And if we turn 180 degrees and then level out straight going back out, it means we're back out of the cloud and we are no longer in IMC conditions. Or so we can hope. Yep, OK, you're out of the cloud again. Just gained about 100 feet you high did, now. You did. I, did, I did take the revs off a little bit just to sort of allow it to sink, but yeah, I well, should have do, taken do, a bit more do, off. Do you want to do another one? Yeah, go do on, a, let's do another one. Do a right hand turn and don't climb 100 feet this time. So we did the whole manoeuvre again and Jeremy said, look, you've just got to take a deep breath. You're just being a bit tense on the control column. Um, and once we've done that, it, I managed to do a really nice, neat rate one turn without losing too much or gaining too much altitude. Okay, that was useful, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so we now headed back to Duxford for some circuits. I was kind of happy that we'd done a lot of the things that I thought I needed brushing up on. And Jeremy was only putting us through these particular manoeuvres on this lesson because I'd said that I wanted to get a little bit better at them. So we went back towards Royston. I whipped my pencil out, ready to take down the rejoin information. Duxford information, Glasser Wings 20, request rejoin information, currently 1,500 feet over Royston. Glasser Wings 20, report downwind left hand to 4, QFE 9 at 9 at 9 at Hector Pascal. QFE 9 at 9 at 9 at Hector Pascal, report downwind for runway 24 left. Glasser Wings 20. I'll leave that on QH. Often we've got about two or three minutes here when it's just looking out, keeping our altitude before we start descending down to circuit height. And I usually take this opportunity to have a little bit of a chat with Jeremy. So, during the week, Jeremy, what time do you usually get home? Seven. Seven. Yeah, and then, right. and then you're back at about ten. 
The good thing about coming back from Royston for a downwind rejoin means that we can do our landing checks and configure our aircraft nice and early and keep workload and stress in the cockpit to a minimum. Three wings, two zero, downwind for a touch and go, two four hard. Two Final and uh, can we have the wind on 24? Class wing 20. Surface wind 170 degrees 05 knots. Roger, class wing 20. Oh, that's definitely good. That's coming out right back. Well, he might have said that, but it did seem that up top we had a little bit more of a crosswind because our base leg really pushed us quite a long way over from the runway. So next time when I go round, I know that I'm going to elongate and swing out a little bit further to the right-hand side if I'm on this particular circuit orientation to make sure that my base leg is longer. Therefore, I won't be off the end of the runway like we are just here. You'll soon see it. Classic Wings 2-0, final touch and go 2-4. Classic Wings 2-0, touch and go, your discretion 2-4, wind 1705. Roger, Classic Wings 2-0. I always test my rudder on the way down. Four hundred. Too low, wasn't I, yesterday? Runway is clear, uh, pretty much stable approach, and we have permission to land. So you can really see us crabbing the aircraft now as we come in, and then as we get over the runway and we're flaring and we're reducing engine power, I'll just tap the rudder slightly to straighten the nose on the aircraft, hopefully for a nice soft touchdown. And in true instructor style, Jeremy is completely silent, which means I've just done a good landing. Uh, one more touch and go, or do you want a full stop? Uh, it's up to you. Um, it's um, 10 to 6. I think I'll probably just call it a day here. Okay. Cut wings 2 0, downwind for a full stop, uh, 2 4 hard. Cut wings 2 0, more final. Roger, cut wings 2 0. If it's a really strong wind, is there a lot to be said for getting a set of flap in on the downwind leg? You, you can put here, you could do, yeah, on the downwind. Because once we come round like this, we go at such a rate of knots, we really go like mad. Yeah, that's much better, and you can just, just turn turn on, yeah. and you'll, you'll be pushed onto, onto the, uh, the um, centre line. So well, I've extended out my base, so hopefully we should get a better lining up now on the centre line. Lights are coming on on our cars. Yeah. Uh, in fact, most lights are on, of course, on the cars now these days. It used to be five years ago, there were no lights on until until darkness. That's a wings 2-0, final touch, uh, final 2-4, full, full stop. Service 2 0, land your discretion, runway 2 4, wind 170 degrees, 0 5 knots. Roger, class wing 2 0. So, a little bit of crabbing coming in yet again. Nothing wrong with that, we just got to make sure that we stay on the centre line. And like I said, when we get over the runway, just tap that rudder as well, straighten the aircraft up. Don't think I was that happy with this approach. Permission to vacate to the hut across the grass, Classic Wings 2-0. Classic Wings 2-0, turn right, cross grass 2-4. Roger, Classic Wings 2-0. So there we go guys, not like everything that we do in a lesson, there are quite a lot of different tiny modules that you need to get sorted out. 
when you're doing your skills test and as of yet I haven't sorted them out and I haven't done my skills test yet. Blame the clouds. Anyway, we parked up late at night, shut the engine down and that was the end of another really enjoyable lesson with Jeremy. It's been great fun learning with him and hopefully I'll get another few lessons in with him now as top ups before I go and rebook my skills test again. Right then guys, so thanks very much for watching. I uh, hope you do hit that subscribe button as well. Uh, I hope, well, you know what? I hope that some people have been thinking about doing a PPL, get an idea as to what what the, what you're looking to sort of attain before you actually go through to your skills test. Um, there's been lots of other little hurdles I've had to get over to get to this stage. Uh, the two big ones being your solo, when you go solo on one circuit on your own, and the other one being your uh, cross country nav. Uh, which was the funnest day I think I've ever had. It was so good. Anyway, um, I'm going to sign off for now. So like I said, please hit the subscribe button, guys. It means a lot to me to have you guys on board. I mean, Times of James is not just a channel about flying. I do lots of videos about history and also just vlogs about what I've been up to. Um, so little five-segment vlogs, I love doing those. Anyway, I'm going to see if I can find my instructor and also see if I can nab a plane. Uh, so anyway, have fun, guys, and I'll see you soon.